The main causes of death and premature death worldwide are from non-communicable chronic diseases, including cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes and chronic respiratory disease. And the main causes of those diseases are behaviours, which include smoking, excessive consumption of alcohol, food and physical inactivity. Earlier this year, the World Health Assembly uh, pledged to reduce those diseases by 25% by 2025, a, a laudable uh, ambition, but that's going to require major shifts in behaviour worldwide. The most common interventions that have been tried over the last two, three decades involve giving people information about the risks from engaging in these health damaging behaviours. It becomes unsurprising when we look at recent findings from psychology and neuroscience that these aren't having the effects that people expected. Because these latest findings are telling us that much of our behaviour is not subject to reflective processes. It's actually occurring mainly automatically without people's awareness. I mean, it doesn't mean that we're behaving randomly but rather our behaviour is being guided by what we've done in the past or by the activation of ideas that appeal to us or actually behaviour that in our environment is going to be the most easy thing to do. Various experiments show that food that is placed further away is less likely to be selected. And in some experiments, we have quite a precise idea of how large the effect is. So food that is more than 10 inches away from somebody is 12% less likely to be selected. Another approach is to try to change the associations that are activated by environmental stimuli. So one recent example that's been much discussed has been the removal of branding on cigarettes. Um, so we know that the branding on cigarettes increases the attractiveness, uh, particularly to young people, of cigarettes. Um, similarly, we know that the branding on fast food increases the attractiveness to children as, as, as well as adults. So removing that kind of branding can reduce the attractiveness of unhealthier products. Um, the trick now is to find ways of increasing the attractiveness of healthier products. So one particular example, uh, a study conducted with three-year-old children um, was able to increase the chances that they tried a lentil stew by just changing the name. So the lentil stew was described either as a healthy stew or as teddy bear's porridge. And when it was described as teddy bear's porridge, 40% of these three-year-olds tried it, compared with just, I think it was 25% who tried it when it was described as a healthy stew. So an example of an intervention that changes in the environment in order to try to change people's behaviour, to shape up people's behaviour so that it's healthier, involves um, making lifts less convenient. So if you slow down the speed at which lift doors close, then eventually people get fed up and they'll use the stairs. One of the barriers to implementing this approach, changing, changing environments in order to change behaviour, is that most of our economies are built on consumption. Some would say excessive consumption. So consumption of tobacco, food, alcohol, fossil fuel, transport. So attempting to reduce consumption of these products is certainly going to improve health, but it's going to challenge economies that are traditionally built on this. Focusing on the automatic basis to much behaviour is quite a threat to how many people think about human action. Most people think that they are in control of their behaviour, that um, what they do should not be controlled by others, by governments regulating to change their environments. I think that much could be done by increasing people's understanding of 
psychology and neuroscience say that people didn't see this as a threat, but had, had just a, a better understanding of our behaviour, say that they were able to see that some attempts to change environments are not trying to control people, but actually providing them with a better environment in which to realise what are values and goals that most of us hold very dear, i.e. being healthy.